grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Music is a wonderful thing. We can use music in a variety of ways. But as I said, music can also change or move us. And the music and the accompanying lyrics uh, sometimes help us to understand someone else's perspective better than we used to be able to. It might help us to express an emotion that, in a way that, simply speaking, couldn't. As we officially do today, what has been taking place for years, and install Dave Bredehoff as our Minister of Music, it's, it's fitting to think about how music can inspire us, uh, helping us move our faith into action, which is exactly what John wants to do in our epistle lesson. And so we, we certainly thank God for the gift of music, and we also thank God for those who are gifted at music. Personally, uh, my favorite type of songs and hymns are the ones that are kind of like battle cries or music that, that motivates or, or pumps me up. Um, I, it's prob some of it may be personality, but maybe some of you can relate. I really like doing and moving and songs that help me focus on what action to take or, or encourage me to, to buckle down or, or to buckle up uh, are the ones that I enjoy the most. And so a song like I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light that we just sang is, is one that helps inspire and encourage uh, and motivate me to take the appropriate steps or actions. They get my blood pumping and excited about being part of God's kingdom, being part of the child of the light. Um, as John writes uh, the letter we call 1 John, we could also call it perhaps more appropriately a, a sermon to the church in Ephesus. And as the video kind of told us, his point is not to give new information. So there's not probably any new information in today's sermon. He's not telling us the story of Jesus or of Easter or of any particular account of the Old or New Testament. What he is doing us is reminding the people of one of the main takeaways of the gospel. He's trying to motivate, encourage, and inspire us, the people, to live a new life. Well, 1 John can also be, at times, a bit of a stress-inducing book or, or a frustrating book. Um, at times, if you read through the book, it seems like he's going back and forth. I really like the, the, the point they make about it being cyclical, uh, because John tells us not to sin, uh, but then he says, we all sin. He says, no one sins who's in the Father, but then he says, but if you do sin, confess your sins. And again, he's, um, he's spending a lot of time trying to encourage and motivate Christians to live as God called them to live by walking in the light and loving others instead of just loving themselves. The problem is, for us sinners, it's hard not to read about all this and not feel guilty. But it will help us if we remember a couple things. One, some of what we've already learned about John previously, and that's that he doesn't always spoon feed us answers. He doesn't always give us the direct answer. He makes us puzzle things out, or perhaps in a case like today, he wants us to wrestle with things, not to take things for granted, but to really think about our lives and to think about sin and when we sin and how that fits, or more appropriately, how that really doesn't fit with what God has called us to. Today's verses encourage us to consider what it means that we are all children of God. And he tells us in our first verse for today um, that we have become children of God all through God's love because of the great love that the Father has lavished upon us. But then he speaks of God's plan. And part of God's plan that he highlights is to take away wickedness or sin. So as God's children, we ought to be doing the work of our Father 
a, f- a phrase that John, or that Jesus often uses to describe his own work in John's gospel. Well, John's primary goal in this section is not to talk about salvation, but to talk about daily life. And that's our focus for today, living. Now, we can certainly find the answers in 1 John as to whether we are sinners, we are, and what to do about it, we confess and repent, and how we are saved through Christ alone. But that's not really his main focus. John wants to tell you, to encourage you to live as a Christian, to live as a child of the light today. And so John, uh, John warns against doing wickedness and sin. Don't be confused. Don't get mistaken. We are not here to sin, he says. Don't forget, after all, why God has come, why Jesus came to destroy the devil's work. I mean, Jesus didn't come just to teach or to give us a choice or because he expected everyone to immediately follow him. We wouldn't have needed the cross if that was the case. Jesus came not only knowing that there would be obstacles, but that there would be sinful opposition, that the devil would oppose his plans. And and although it was in a rather curious and shocking manner through the cross, that was indeed Jesus overcoming sin and the devil. The story of Jesus dying on the cross is not the story of a loss, but of a, a surprising and unorthodox victory. Victory over the devil, and over sin that leaves, leads to loss, heartache, and death. Um, righteous John puts a lot of emphasis on, in, his, in this book upon us living the right way or doing what we ought to do or doing what is right. And if you read through all of 1 John, you'll see what I mean. Just like in the Gospel of John, here John wants us not just to hear about or see Jesus, but to live in a new way because of Jesus. He wants us to live righteous lives, which to John means following the commands of our Lord. Again, as as imperfect human beings, however, it's hard when we read about how we ought to live or hearing about sin, it's hard not to feel inadequate or guilty. Um, And if we struggle with overcoming sin, well, that's not really the right way to say it. Since we all struggle with overcoming sin, if we admit it, that simply means that we have some degree of honesty. As John says, as we said in our confession, if we confess, if we, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us. Um, as we look at sin, if we struggle with verses like these, it's because we all struggle with sin. But what we can't do, what John wants us to avoid, is simply throwing in the towel. We can't say simply, well, it doesn't matter. It's no big deal, or I give up. Rather, we confess. And then John wants us to jump back into the arena and focus on the next step that's in front of us now. This past week, uh, Laura Lee's at our midweek program for kids called Ignite, Laura Lee's devotion was about running in a race and, and keeping our eyes on the prize, on the goal in Jesus from Philippians. Um, uh, now, you, when you're running a race, the point was you don't look to the side, you don't look behind you, you push, you strain forward, you focus on where you're going, not what's behind you or what's on the side of you. And as God's, um, as uh, we too are encouraged to, Forget about everything else and focus on what's in front of us, the goal and the steps necessary to reach that goal. The devil wants us to look back at our sin or perhaps at what we think is good. What God wants us to do is to look forward, to forget everything else and to focus on the next step for today. And what a joy that we get to do that because we can live one day at a time in the grace of God. Uh, because we don't have to worry about the past because of what Christ has done for us. Uh, John encourages us to do that by reminding us of our identity. We are children of God, and it's only by the love of God that has lavished on us that we are that. 
And as God's children, we respect our father. We, we don't want to fight against what our father says. When you're little, you typically, right, you look up to your parents and you want to be like them. And uh, we don't want to upset them. We want to please them, want them to be proud of us. And that's what God, John encourages us to think of our heavenly father in such a way. And that's why it's to John, simply unfathomable to simply persist in sinning because we are children of God. And that's who we are. We are not children of the devil, no matter what the devil or anyone else might tell us. You are a child of God, redeemed, loved, and forgiven. And so we forget about what's been going on or what you did last night or how long you've been struggling Forget about all the sins and all the things that distract you because the good news is God has forgotten about it. God has forgiven you of that sin. And so now, instead of being hampered by the past, we, uh, we forget about everything else and we look at Christ and we remember who we are. Uh, we forget about complications and excuses and for a minute we simply listen to God's Reminder, who are you? You are God's own child. And do you trust in your heavenly father? If so, then, then it makes, only makes sense that you would follow him. Forget everything else. Instead, focus on Jesus. Focus on God's plan, not on yourself, not on your good deeds, not on your sins, but on Jesus. Jesus and his plan, because that's why we're here, too, to carry out the Father's plan revealed in Jesus. And what is God's plan? Well, it's pretty simple, and one major part of it is to embrace the light and to stop sinning. And so, remember that uh, we remember that we forget sin, and, and we focus on Jesus, and then we follow Jesus. And that's the rhythm of of a Christian life uh, when it comes to sin. We forget sin, uh, we focus on Jesus, and we follow Jesus, then we might say, and we lean on that we are forgiven through Jesus. Um, now that's uh, simple, uh, but it's tough, right? It's, but it, it's what God wants. It's what God has called us to. Stop sinning. That's what we need to do. We need to stop sinning. Why? Do we stop sinning because our salvation depends on it? Certainly not. Our salvation doesn't. Your salvation depends entirely on Jesus. But you still are called to walk in the light, not in darkness. And we live in the light, not because if we sin, which we do sometimes, that we'll go to hell. No, we stop sinning because of who we are and whose we are. You, after all, are the Lord's. And as we just heard in that, we, be, through Christ, sin is already defeated. Even if we sometimes falter and fail, never lose track of the fact that we have been forgiven and we have the victory in Christ. And so we, uh, as victors in Christ, we move forward as God leads us towards life and towards righteousness, not towards hate, or selfishness, or hurt. We want to stop sinning because the devil's plan is no good. It's nasty, and, heart and hateful, and harmful. On the other hand, God's plan for creation is good. And so, we're encouraged by John today, don't sin, because it's not who we are. Who, we, who are we? We are redeemed Child, children of God, living in the light of Christ. Sure, we sin. We sin, right? We admit that, but we confess it, and we're forgiven. So we don't have to live in sin. We instead move forward, and we remember uh, and we, that we're valued by our Father, that He's lavished great love upon us. So we don't need to settle for cheap imitations, because we can find real joy in what the Lord gives us. We can find true comfort in the help and in the arms of your heavenly Father and in the outstretched, nail-marked arms of our Savior. And so 
we encourage, we are encouraged, don't sin, because you are loved. And you can find love and satisfaction in your Father and in His good plan and provisions for you. In Jesus' name, amen.